My parents brought me to America from Ireland in 1859. They came to America and brought me along in search of an improved life, better living conditions, and jobs. They had heard that America could offer them promising opportunities and decided to head over when I was only three years old. We arrived to America a few weeks after leaving our homeland and settled in New York City, where my father began working in a factory. Over the years, father became ill due to the unsafe conditions he was working in. However, we needed the money in order to survive, which meant we could not afford to have him stop working. Soon after I turned at nine, father passed away. Mother slipped into an extreme depression. She could not work to keep us alive because jobs were scarce by that time and she missed father greatly. I was given up for adoption to the New York Foundling Hospital, an orphanage for children, just a few months after father's death. I never knew about mother ever again. At the Foundling Hospital, I met a lot of orphans whose parents had died and who had been living in the streets for years. There were children of all ages. I made a lot of friends, but was separated from them in the cold morning of December 9th of 1868, when suddenly we were all woken up, fed, bathed, clothed, and put on trains with a few chaperones, and the destination being a complete mystery to all of us children. I was put in a different train wagon than my friends, and we did not see each other ever again. Never actually told the purpose of this occurrence, nor our destination. We finally arrived in the state of Illinois and were made to stand on a platform before crowds of adults as if we were merely objects there for auction. I was already 12 years old by that time and remember being scared and confused, though the younger children cried and kicked all over the place. Upon watching other adults, evaluating mainly the boys on the platform and taking them, the dirty old man in overalls grabbed me by the arm and said I would make a terrific housemaid back at the farm. I pulled and kicked in hopes that he would let go of me, but his grasp became tighter and tighter by the second. When he finally was able to take me with him, he sat me in a truck and took me home to a family of nine awaiting us on the front porch of a farmhouse. The family owned a very large farm in the southern area of Illinois. None of the children went to school. They all worked at the farm and provided for the family. I was their housemaid and was in charge of cleaning and cooking with the mother and the sisters while the boys helped the father with the crops and the animals. I despised this family and my new lifestyle to which I could not get used to. At such a young age, I had different plans for myself than those that the family had for me. I knew I could not make anything of myself working for a family my whole life. And upon turning 19, I ran away. Tired of the difficult labor I had been forced to do in my childhood, I went back to New York City in hopes of finding my mother. I went to the place where I remembered I had lived with my parents and to the New York Foundling Hospital, but without success, I could not find even the most minimal information of my mother's whereabouts. I loathed that family in Illinois and loathed the West, so I decided to settle in New York City and start anew. I was young after all. Nevertheless, the thought of finding my mother never left my mind and after countless attempts at obtaining information about myself and my past, I was finally told that I was part of the orphan train movement which began in 1853 and which was still taking place all around the country. I found out that a New York minister, Charles Loring Brace, had been the founder of the Children's Aid Society, an institution which helped the unfortunate children of New York. This institution, along with the New York Foundling Hospital, 
the orphanage to where my mother had taken me, took children off the streets and put them on trains, which took them to the west to become adopted by families, with farms who could use some extra hands since the farm industry was growing in that region of the country. The minister thought that the children would be better off in the homes of people where they could live and work, rather than in the streets where crime and disease would certainly find them. This was later called the Orphan Train Movement and lasted from 1853 to the early 20th century, making me one of the first participants in the year 1868. I learned that by the 1850s, 30,000 children had been living in the streets of New York, and by the time the movement was over, more than 200,000 children in need of families had been placed in homes all over the country as well as in Mexico and Canada. The orphan train movement had been the beginning of the foster care system in the United States.